Hey YouTube, so um, I tried showing you um, my tests and uh, I taped them to a piece of paper so that you guys are able to see them a little bit better without me like fumbling around. Um, firstly, I would like to say that I'm sick right now, so um, ignore me if I'm like messing with my nose, which m the majority of the time it's because of my, uh, my piercing, but... Um, I'm actually sick right now, so, um, excuse me for that, but, um, anyway, hold on. I had to blow my nose. Okay, so, let's get down to business really quick. I don't want to make a super, super long video. Um, basically, oh, I taped it down. I, was, I didn't mean to do that. Did I? I lose it. I'm losing my mind is what's happening. Okay, um, anyway, so, um, I took a test this morning, um, about three o'clock. It was my first morning urine. Today I'm 12, um, days past trigger, and I'm gonna try to, like, show this to you because I really wasn't trying to tape it down, but I did. So, um, it's the very bottom one here. You guys can see it. Um, this is my, um, kind of like what I'm using as my control um this is four days past trigger so it's my most positive one so whoops I'm gonna compare it right there for you guys and if you look um this one is just about as dark as the top couple ones um it's definitely more pink than a lot of the ones in here um it's kind of hard to understand what's going on with my body though because um let me just fold this in half um, it's kind of confusing because if you really take a look at all of these, um, so like they start off really dark and like they're fading out, fading out and I get like a negative around here at nine. And then my 10 is like super dark. Um, my 10 again is like, it's kind of fading out and then at night it's dark again. And then, um, yesterday morning I was like completely negative. And then, um, I took one last night and it was, um, it was, it was pretty dark. And then this morning was, um, let me see here if I can fold that. And then this morning was, um, pretty dark as well. So, um, just like looking at it in person, it's so much harder to see over the camera, but looking at it in person, um, this bottom one here, it's, um, it's a lot darker than like almost all of these in the middle. It's about as dark as this one right here my sixth one. So, um, with that being said, um, I'm still trying to decide whether or not I want to keep testing. Um, just because it's, um, I had talked to, um, my, uh, reproductive endocrinologist and, um, well, they said that, um, I've done like so much research and I took 250, um, micrograms of um, overdrill 12 days ago and um, basically from the research that I've done and on like um, if you go to like overdrill like the company site and they like go over like the uh, mornings and everything it says that it's uh, it's approximately 6700 um, MIUs in that it has a um, it has a let's see I think it says a half it has a half-life of 27 hours and then you lose 50 percent every 27 hours thereafter so if you use those calculations, um, I should only have one MIU of HCG today. And um, obviously these tests determine, um, these, the lowest these will pick up is 25. So um, with that being said, I'm trying to determine if, um, if I should really worry. Um, my period's due in a couple of days. So I'm not really sure if, um, if I can call it a positive yet or not, just because it's been like, fluctuating but I'm not exactly sure if that's like because I didn't hold here long enough or if like I'm just I'm not sure at this point um but um I just wanted to kind of go over like what I did differently this cycle um other than the trigger shot which is obvious but I did want to kind of go over what was different because um I do because of how dark it was um today and just like re-looking at it like I do think that like there's a good chance that I am pregnant so um and the first thing that I always ask people is um is okay well what did you do different this cycle and um I'm just gonna kind of go over what I've done differently and what I've been doing just to kind of let you guys know and obviously if I'm not pregnant um 
then it's just kind of like an informational video on what um, what it is that I take and um, what I'm trying to do. So um, as you guys know, I have PCOS and um, I'm not insulin resistant, so I don't take metformin. Um, I have high testosterone and that's about the only thing. I'm high testosterone and I have an extremely high AMH level, so I have lots of lots of lots of little follicles. Um, which means that I wasn't ovulating before I got on those medications. Those are like really my only two determining factors in my PCOS. So this is what I take. Um, okay, so obviously um, twice a day. If you got, I mean, I'm sure everybody's. That's kind of like their staple um, for what they do. And then I take one of these a day, which obviously isn't very helping me. I mean, it's not very good now is it because I'm sick so um, I take two of these a day um, if it's like dark and cloudy out I take three of them and that's just because I have a vitamin D deficiency um, it kind of helps with my mood you know I'm one of those people who get like sad you know like seasonal affective disorder so um, I say I take at least two of these a day and then this one is like a lifesaver um, it's a liquid you hold it under your tongue for 30 seconds and then you take it with water or I do because it tastes like crap but um, basically um, this one has lengthened my luteal phase by two days since I've started taking it um, it also gives you like awesome energy and everything else so like those are kind of my basic go-to's um, I don't take any extra folic acid which I um, I used to take extra folic acid but then I you know I'm not 100% sure if like I have low folic acid and I didn't want to overdose just because it's one of those things. I also have iron pills that um, I don't take, but I mean I have them just because I know that they've helped some people, but I haven't actually, I haven't been like diagnosed with low iron or low folic acid or I, you know, I don't have a deficiency of any of them. So I just kind of take the basics. Um, but uh, at night I take this and um, <laughs> this is going to be kind of funny because I know you guys are like, what? That says children's. I know. Um, I use Zarbies just because, um, they're all natural. Obviously, melatonin is natural. We all know that. But I use Zarbies because they only use natural ingredients. You can't overdose. You can't, um, there's no interactions or anything like that. And, um, it's always worked for me. So, um, I take these to help me sleep because I, like, I can't sleep at all. And, um, and here's something that I just want to share with you guys. Um, I've been sick, so I've been taking this. Now the interesting interesting thing about this is um, I was reading last night and it says um, may repeat every four hours not to exceed two servings in 24 hours. So it's like, okay, I wonder why, you know, like I've, ta I've actually talked to the company before and asked them, you know, like, can you overdose? What, you know, um, what interactions do they have? And they were like, it's all natural, blah, blah, blah. So I was reading the ingredients and it has like dark honey, vitamin C, zinc, you know, melatonin, um, grapefruit and then it has English ivy leaf um, has a, a hefty amount of um, has 76 milligrams of uh, ivy leaf in it and I was like huh I was like that's interesting I wonder if that's what helps with you know my nose so I like looked it up and um, apparently English ivy leaf is um, known for causing contractions and you're not supposed to take it or anything with it at all throughout any part of your pregnancy especially the first 12 weeks so um Thank you, Zarbies, for your warning. Um, so not going to take that anymore. So I just wanted to give people a heads up if they're unaware. Um, you know, if, you, if you're if you trying to have a baby um, and if it's not too much of a stress on it, a stressor for you, I would suggest uh, only using things natural and that you know aren't going to interact with at least at least up to ovulation until you know if you're pregnant or not. Because um, there are so many things like um, parsley causes contractions. Um, red raspberry leaf causes contractions. Um, you know, there's so many of these things that people say like, oh, they cause contractions. You know, they can cause miscarriage. And you know, a lot of a lot of you who are like me and you're you're extra careful. Um, you just want to be extra careful. You know, you don't want to do something to cause um, any kind of harm or any kind of um, or prevent your chances. So um, basically, basically that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, I really, really wish I didn't tape this here because it's like. I was trying to like help you guys see stuff like by taping it. I'm like, oh, I'll do that. And I was like, oh, I'll leave the today's out so I can like show it to them closer. And then I was like looking down at it and I'm like, oh, son of a, you know, I was like, dang it. I can't believe I did that. So um, I'm going to peel it off and it's going to like, 
not be a good situation here. So, come on, baby. Oh my gosh, I'm so tired of being sick. Like, it started off as like, um, I thought it was allergies a couple days ago because I get really bad allergies during the summer. And um, so I started taking Benadryl, which I take children's everything because I'm, you know, I mean, I'm considered a healthy weight, but I'm white. So um, I like to take smaller doses of things if it gets the job done. So I took Benadryl and then my throat started hurting and I'm like, okay, it's definitely not, um, it's definitely not uh, allergies. So then, um, anyway, so, um. And then I was like, oh, it's definitely not allergies. So um, then I was like, okay, you know, maybe I'm sick. So I went to the doctor and she looked at my tonsils and she's like, oh, you have an infection. She went to give me a medication, but um, I don't really take medication. Um, so I waited a day and my throat, sore throat completely went away. And she said that's all the medication was for because they can't really do anything about like my decongestant other than over the counter. So I didn't end up taking it. And then... Um, I was like, okay, well, I'll just take my Zarbies, um, stuff, and, I mean, and then it went away yesterday, and I was doing really good, and then all of a sudden today, all day, it's just been, like, terrible, so I'm not sure what's going on, but anyway, I pried this sucker off, so, um, my tests are, like, falling apart, like, all of, like, the little, like, pads, like, the absorbent pads are falling off and everything, because I've kept them for too long, but I'm gonna compare, um, and I ha also, I might like, scraped the crap out of this test, so you'll see a little, like, line vertical, but, you know. Anyway, so I'm going to compare my test that I took this morning from my very first trigger. So, my four days after my trigger, so it's, like, a really strong positive. So, I just want to kind of compare on that. This is four days past trigger and 12 days past trigger. And in my opinion, if your 12 days past trigger is almost as dark as your four days past trigger, I mean, you have to be pregnant, right? Like... There's no way that your body can retain the same amount of trigger, like, that much. Like, you're supposed to lose so much a day. And, like, as I said, like, even the company itself was like, oh, you know, you're, it has a half-life of this and this and this and this. And, you know, it on average, it's out by at least, like, day 10. Because I only took 250 milligrams. There are women who take 10 or 250 micrograms, which is 6,700 MIUs. There are people who take... 10,000 MIUs and they're out by like 10 or 11. So mine should have been out a long time ago. So anyway, here's my comparison for you guys. Um, I just wish like the light, it's like my, I have like a um, Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge Plus. So like I have like a big, nice new phone and it does this really weird thing where it, like it tries to like, um, like, I guess it's for, like, blemishes and stuff. Like, anything white, it, like, smooths, like, the imperfections. It's obviously not because I got this. But uh, it just, like, kind of, like, does, like, a smoothing process, like, while you're, like, taking pictures or anything. So, it's, like, it's, like, this is so much darker in person and they can see it. And it's just, it's not, um, it's not that great. But I'm going to show you guys anyway. Um, maybe if I, like, flip it over here, it'll be, like, a little bit more. There you go. I get some of that light out of the way. So, um, anyway, so now you guys can see that, like, it's a pretty, it's a pretty dark test. Like, I just don't see how, like, ew. I don't see how, like, a 12 days past trigger, um, your test can get, like, that dark. You know, like, I just, I don't understand. I know that was gross, sorry. Anyway. So, um, yeah, so, like, that's just, like, my neat little comparison, um, I mean, the way that this is, like, this is dry now, by the way, and I know they're, like, oh, don't read them after 10 minutes, and it's, like, okay, well, how am I supposed to, like, do a progression if I don't, like, hold them, you know, anyway, um, but all of my tests are dried now, so I can, like, equally compare them, like, to the other ones, you know, like, none of them are wet or anything, so, uh, in my opinion, which I'm this paper was entirely too big and it was ridiculous. I shouldn't have done that. Um, anyway, so um, just for fun and comparison, um, if you like look at this test and you like compare it to everything, it's pretty close to this one, which is um, the one I took at 10 o'clock at night or the, um, two days ago at night that I took. It was my 10 um, days past trigger at night. And then if you're like going up and you're like looking, 
it's like significantly darker than the majority of these and then like you bring it back up to here and it's like it's pretty close to six in my opinion like in person it looks like it might even be darker than six it might even be like pretty equal to my five which you know that's like as I said, like, it just, um, I don't know. This is a new experience for me. Um, I've never taken a trigger shot before, and I've never even seen a positive pregnancy test before until this beauty decided to show up on me. So, um, so for me, it's just, um, this is all a learning experience, and, you know, if I'm not pregnant, I'll be able to look back and be like, okay, this is what my test looked, um, this many days after trigger. Um, or, you know, whatever whatever that is so um sorry the fire alarm's going off i'm making sure it's not like a tornado alarm because um that scares the crap out of me anyway so um it's more of a learning experience for me um but i'm just i'm just trying to compare and trying to look and be like okay it's darker it's darker it's darker you know like i'm moving it up the line and i'm like oh you're looking a lot like you know you're looking you're looking like a five day past trigger line and like that's you know it's almost a week ago math so um so like to me in my opinion like I mean I would love I really keep reaching out there and I would love to like talk to some people who have had the trigger and I want to hear their experiences like on testing it out and what happened because I just think it's so fascinating that like that like you know every every progression that I've seen of the trigger test it's like dark 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 light 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 and it goes completely negative and then you're not pregnant or it's like where it's like dark, light, 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 and then like it slowly starts to like get darker and darker and darker and it's positive, like there's no negatives at all. Or they're the women who like go from dark to light to negative and then their positive shows up. So I mean, but I've never seen anybody go from like dark to light and then it starts getting darker for like a couple days and then it goes light for one day and then dark and it's just like, I don't understand, like your HCG doesn't fluctuate if I like, if I'm if I'm correct, I mean, just the way that, like, the female body does things and the way that you develop a fetus, it's just, it doesn't make sense. Like, you know, the trigger shot is going out of your system, and the only way that you will ever have a surge of HCG after that trigger shot is if you're pregnant. Like, your body doesn't, like, hoard little amounts of HCG in your body and then randomly, like, spurt it out. Like, that's just not how the medication leaves your body. So, um, just from, like, a scientific or, you know, um... Uh, just just that kind of like an outlook on it makes me think okay I'm pregnant because you know why else would I be surging um you know today like why would I have that such a dark um test today and the thing is is like with this one oops my fingers covering it with this one this is my today one which as I said like if you guys can tell it's like it's like not focusing on it it's focusing on my face so it's like hard to see but um the amazing thing about it is that it's just, I don't know, like, if I'm not pregnant, I think this is an amazing, um, amazing thing to study is, you know, what, what happened? Are these faulty tests? Did something happen? Was it, you know, I mean, if I have the, if I'm slowly losing, they're supposed to say you lose 50% of your HCG a day. So if you have 6,700, you divide that and then you have like 30 something. And I, and I, I actually like math, like I went down and it's like you have 6,700, you lose 50% within the first day and then 50% every single day thereafter, after 27 hours. So every 27 hours you lose that 57 or 50%. So like, you know, like today I calculated, I was like one point something, 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 um, in my use of HCG today is what I should have if that's how my body, um, metabolized it. So it's like, if I have that low, was my urine just extremely concentrated this morning? Like, is that, that's like my biggest question is, is the urine concentration what truly has to do with, um, with all of this? Is that, is that why it's fluctuating is, you know, because I'm taking it at the same time every day, uh, in the morning, at least my first morning urine is around three o'clock in the morning. So it's like, it's just, it's just a very interesting point to me, for me to bring up. So, um, if you guys have done a trigger, I would love your opinions. If not, um, you know, always feel free to comment and tell me your opinion anyway. Um, you can go to my blog. It's ttchope.blogspot.com. Um, you can also find me on Kendara. It's an amazing app. I suggest you download. I'm under there as Mrs. Ferg. 
Um, and it's the same picture as my um, YouTube channel picture. So you guys can find me on there um, if you want. I have pictures on my blog um, of up close, like, of what these pregnancies just look like if you want to take a look there. Um, but anyway... Um, I'm not sure what I'll do tomorrow. I'm not sure if I'll test. If I test, um, I'll obviously be back and let you guys know. I said I wasn't going to make another video until um, until I knew for sure whether or not I was pregnant. But um, it just helps me so much to be able to talk to you guys. And I know that you're probably anxious to figure out um, what's going on with me. I've had a lot of people who are like, oh, congratulations, you're definitely pregnant. I had a lady, um, one of my followers at Kandara, actually call her Ari and ask for me. Um, because mine's closed on the weekends. It was like, oh, she took this many micrograms of Overdrill, and how would that be out? And they were like, oh, it should be out at seven, seven days past your trigger, and she can start testing at 10, and anything after 10 is positive. Well, I'm 12 today, 12 days past trigger. So um, by her RE standards, I am pregnant. So um, that being said, oh, another interesting fact, just to bring it up really quick, um, I took a digital as well this morning. I took a digital with second morning urine, not the same urine this test was in, but it came up not pregnant. And I think that's hilarious because, I mean, it's not funny, but um, because, I mean, look at this. This one right here. Like, how are you going to tell me that that's not pregnant? Like, it's it's it looks so faint on here and that's so silly. But, I mean, it's, it's definite. I promise you, it's pink and it showed up quick. And it was, oh... This cheapy test takes like five minutes to show a line and it took it took ten minutes to show up this line. That's crazy. So it took about five minutes to show up this line. And it's pink and it's beautiful and in, in my opinion it's a lot darker than the rest of these. So um they're like, oh not pregnant. And I know that I think that they they do fifty in um MIUs is what they detect the clear blue digital in these um tests for twenty. So or 25 or something like that. So anyway, I'm going to log off here and I will update you guys tomorrow on the outcome. Um, but either way, by Monday, um, if my tests are still positive, I'm calling in for a beta. And if my tests are negative by then, then obviously they're negative. I might still do a beta. I'm not sure. So um, I think that's all I have for you guys. And I will update you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.